Hello and welcome to DCBA. Uh, in today's video lecture, we are going to start with uh, the series of conjugate beam method. As I had already told you that I'll be posting two series that is one is moment area method and one is conjugate beam method. The moment area method I've already posted in my channel. If you haven't watched that, then please go and check it out. I'll be also giving the link on the top right corner. And this is the conjugate beam method. So let us first start with the conception basics or basically let us just first start with the definition so conjugate beam is defined as an imaginary beam with same dimensions as that of the original beam but load at any point in conjugate beam is bending moment divided by the ei of original beam so from the from the definition itself we come to know that there are two beams in this first is the conjugate beam second is the original beam we are dealing with two different two beams and on conjugate beam the loading which is put on the conjugate beam is nothing but the moment of original beam divided by ei that is the m by ei diagram so the m by ei diagram we are putting as a load on conjugate beam right now what is the difference between an original and conjugate beam so if in original beam if the end is a hinge if the end is a hinge then that same end in conjugate beam becomes a roller end hinge becomes an end roller an end roller becomes an end hinge a fixed support becomes a free support and a free support becomes a fixed support okay an internal hinge or internal roller will become an internal hinge here. this is internal hinge means an intermediate hinge okay end hinge and internal hinge internal hinge or intermediate hinge are different end hinges at the end of the beam like this 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 is an end hinge but if there is some hinge or roller in between then that would be considered in this case and that becomes an as a internal hinge in conjugate beam okay and then internal hinge in the original beam will become an intermediate roller or a hinge in a conjugate beam just consider this example a simply supported beam okay of uh, uh, having a point load of 10 kilonewton or 10 yeah 10 kilonewton acting at a distance of 2 meters and ei is the flexural rigidity of that particular beam so if you find the reactions then the reactions are 6 kN here and 4 kN here that reaction part I'll leave upon you that is quite fairly easy to find and if I draw the bending moment diagram then it is going to be a triangle that is 6 into 2 12 that divided by the EI of that number that is that moment value divided by the flexural rigidity will give you M by EI diagram and uh, this m by ei diagram of original beam now this is the original beam right let us draw the conjugate beam so as i told you end hinge will become end roller so this end hinge here becomes end roller and end roller in the original beam becomes end hinge in a conjugate beam and this m by ei diagram of original beam that will act as a loading on your conjugate beam now why are we doing this why are we putting it as a load it and what is the use of that now if i want to find the slope basically we are we are doing this conjugate beam method and or moment area method just to find two things one is the slope which is theta and one is deflection so in this conjugate beam method the slope at any point let's say this point is a this point is b this is c again a b and here is c so the slope at a is equal to the slope at a in original beam is equal to shear force at a of conjugate beam so you have you have to just normally solve this beam as as you solve for any other beam but only the thing is that the loading will be m by e diagram that's it so the shear force at this point will be equal to the slope of this or the deflection at any point in original beam is equal to mo negative of bending moment at that point in conjugate beam so let's say i want to find deflection of c in my original beam then it will be nothing but 
bending moment negative or bending moment at c in my conjugate beam the idea is fairly simple okay and this method itself is also very simple we'll solve the two two numericals and those same two numericals i have solved using momentary method as well the sign convention that we'll be using is clockwise is positive for slope anti clockwise slope is negative downward deflection is negative upward deflection is positive that's it so see you in the next lecture in which we solve a numerical and uh, yeah bye bye